Assalamu alaikum everyone. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. How are you all? Hope you all are doing great in your homes. Welcome to the new video with me. Hi, I am Doctor and you are watching Doctor Potential. Till now, we already discussed about the indication, contraindication and managing the patient on the chair side. So, now your patient is on the dental chair. You already done the pre-op work of history and examination. And now is the time for tray preparation. You have to select appropriate instruments for your extraction of the concerned tooth. You select the... So, today you learned thoroughly about extraction forcep, that which is the forcep you are going to use, what is the technique, what is, how to handle the instrument and what is the appropriate chair position as well as the operator position. Let's get started. Extraction forcep. What is extraction forcep? Extraction forceps are instruments used for removing the tooth from the alveolar bone. It is basically used to lift elevated luxated teeth from their sockets. If we use the extraction forcep properly, then they also help us to expand the bone during extraction so there are less chances of fracture. The components of the forcep. The basic component of dental forceps are handles, hinge and beak. The handles of the forcep are of adequate size to be used comfortably by the operator to deliver sufficient pressure to leverage to, uh, and to remove the required tooth. As you see in the diagram, there are serrations on the handle. These serrations used to allow a positive and a firm grip and to prevent slippage. Hinge of the forcep connects the handle to its peak. Its main function is to transfer and concentrate the force applied to the handles to the peak. The peak of the extraction forcep are the source of greatest variation among forceps. So basically, the classification of the extraction forceps depend on the shape of the beak. The purpose of the beak is to adopt the tooth root. The tooth root at the junction of crown and root. The most common mistake the young dentist and mostly undergraduates do is to hold the crown with beak. The force on the crown led to the fracture of of the tooth and then the consequences are much more complicated extraction and sometimes we have to go through open extraction. So you must be careful when placing the peak placed as much apically as possible to the root of the tooth. The classification of extraction for sep on the basis of its peak and the design of the peak there are different forceps for single rooted teeth two rooted teeth and three rooted teeth. Forceps are different for the maxillary arch and for the mandibular arch. The tip of the beaks are different in, uh, and there is a variation so we can adopt closely to the root. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the forceps used for the maxillary arch. The forceps are different for the anteriors different for premolars and different for molars and for the third molar there is a different forcep. This the different and the variation is forcep is based on the root morphology and root formation. Some tooth like the incisors are single rooted. rooted. Premolars are uh, single as well as the do, uh, two rooted and the first molar of the maxillary arch are the three rooted teeth. So, for the firm grip with the peak, there is the variation in the peak. Maxillary anteriors. It includes central incisor, lateral incisors and the canine. Canine is the most powerful and the most bulky tooth of the uh, arch. So, the forcep used for the extraction of the maxillary anteriors is in the number 1 forcep or number 150 that is the universal forcep. If we compare the function of 150 forcep or number 1 forcep, then the result is the number 1 forcep that is the straight forcep is easier to use in the incisors and, the, uh, and up to the canine as compared to number 150 forcep which is slightly curved. Now the question arises how to grip the forcep. What is the proper positioning of the forcep? 
and what is the chair position when we are going to extract the anterior teeth. Ciliary forceps are held with the palm to the side or underneath the forcep. Palm to the side or underneath so that the beak is directed in the superior direction or, and we can get the axis properly. As you seen in this diagram that the forcep is holding with the palm under the handle so the beak is in the superior direction. We can in, in this way we can get the axis to the root of the tooth easily. Now coming towards what should be the chair position, what should be the position of the operator and what should be the hand positions to get the maximum axis visibility and to, and to hold the forceps firmly to apply the pressure and the force so that we can luxate and to elevate the tooth from the socket. For maxillary extraction, the chair position should be tipped backward, should be slightly tipped backward so the maxillary occlusal plane is at the angle of about 60 degrees to the floor. In this way, we can get the maximum visibility of the maxillary teeth, especially the anterior. The dental surgeon should be at 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock position to the patient so that they can get a maximum accessibility and visibility for the extraction of the concerned tooth. As you seen in the first diagram, the left index finger of the surgeon retracting the lips and supports the alveolar process on the buccal aspect. The thumb is positioned on the palatal aspect of the alveolar process and supports the alveolar process. So, dental surgeon should feel the tactile sensations. Coming towards our next tooth, that is the maxillary premolar. First maxillary premolar is a single rooted tooth in its first two thirds with a bifurcation into the buccolingual root, usually occurring in the apical one third to one half. So, the root is slightly divergent, slightly a wider in the buccolingual dimension as compared to the incisors and canines. The forcep of choice for the maxillary premolars is number 150 forcep or alternatively 150A. The beaks of this forcep are concave and not pointed. The beak is slightly curved as compared to the handle. So the overall shape of the forcep is S-shaped. This is known as the universal forcep because this forcep is also used for the extraction of the anteriors for canines, for premolars as well as for the deciduous anteriors. But the size used for the deciduous is slightly smaller. The curve in the beak is for the accessibility to the roots. The space between the peak is for the better anchorage of the roots. So, this is basically the forcep we can use for everything except for molars. Cripping or the uh, holding of the forcep is same as for the anteriors, that the concave part of the curved handle faces the palm, while the concave part of the beak turns upward or superior. The chair position for the patient is same as for the anteriors but for the better visibility the surgeon can turn the face of the patient towards him or herself so can so can get the better access visibility and uh, anchorage and leverage becomes easier. Now come towards the most strongest tooth in the arch that is the molars. First molar and second molar. Maxillary molars are the three rooted teeth with the single palatal root and buccal bifurcation as seen is the, in the diagram. Therefore, forceps that are specifically adopted to fit the maxillary molars must have a smooth concave surface for the palatal root. As you understand that the for the palatal root, for the palatal surface, the uh, forceps beak should be smooth and concave and a beak with a pointed design that will fit into the buccal bifurcation is on the buccal side. Repeating again that pointed buccal beak and rounded palatal beak. So there are different forceps for the right arch and for the left arch. The most commonly used molar forceps are numbered 53R and 53L. 53R for right molar, 53L for left molar. If the crown is severely carious, then the, uh, then the forcep used is number 88 forcep. 
Here we understand the importance of history. If we take the proper history, proper examination, then we can select the instrument properly because there is a difference in the right and left forceps. So, take the history, then examination, then tray, uh, tray preparation. The grip of the maxillary molar forcep is same as for the anteriors and premolars that the operator can hold the forcep in an underhand or the side position for the firm grip. The chair position is also same as for the premolars. As you seen in the diagram, the operator is extracting the left posterior teeth of the patient and the head of the patient is slightly turned towards the right side to gain the maximum visibility. Now the main topic and the focus of the dental surgeon is the movement and the forces which should be applied for the extraction of the tooth. For the extraction of the maxillary incisor teeth, what forceps we are used? Yes, you remembered. It is the universal forcep that is number 150 or the straight forcep that is the number 1 forcep. Revising the little root morphology of the incisors, we remembered that the roots of the maxillary incisors have conical roots, conical shapes and the lateral incisors have the longer roots and more cylinder. Sometimes the lateral incisors also have a distal curvature which makes the uh, extraction little bit difficult. First of all, what we have to do is to seed our forcep to the root as apically as forcep. Then apply a little bit pressure on the apical side. This breaks all the periodontal ligaments around the tooth. After the apical force, we have to apply the force on the labial side than on the lingual side. More force on the labial side because the labial or the buccal bone is thin as compared to the palatal bone which is heavier. So apply the pressure on the labial side then you feel the tooth is luxated. The initial movement should be slow, steady and firm in the labial direction. Then we are applying rotational movement. Rotational movement should be minimized for the lateral incisor if the curvature in the apical tooth is present. The tooth is delivered in the labial incisal direction with a small amount of the tectional force. Finally, we apply the tectional force and yes, your tooth is extracted. How to extract a canine? As we all know that the canine is the longest tooth in the mouth. So the preferred instrument used for the canine extraction is the universal forcep. As with all extractions, the initial placement of the peak of the forcep on the canine root should be as far apically as possible. The initial movement is apical and then to the buccal aspect, then the pressure applied to the palatal aspect, more on the buccal and less on the palatal as we discussed earlier. As the bone expanded and the root mobilized, the forceps should be repositioned apically to gain more accessibility. To break the periodontal ligaments as much as possible, a small amount of rotational force may be useful in expanding the root socket. When we feel the tooth is luxated now, then we apply the tractional force in the labial direction. Tractional force should be always in the labial incisal direction and not in the palatal direction. Maxillary premolar teeth is the has the bifurcated root in its apical one third. So, the instrument of choice for the maxillary premolar is the universal forcep number 150 or for the maxillary premolar we can use the 150A. Points to remember during the extraction of the premolar are number 1 do not apply the force more on the palatal side. Do not apply any rotational force as it uh, leads to the fracture of the root and leads to the complications. We try to luxate the tooth with the straight elevator first and then we use the force set. Delivery of the tooth from the tooth socket is with the tractional force. Tractional force should be applied in the occlusal direction and slightly buccal. In the dental OPDs, the most common extraction is of the molar tooth. The molar tooth is also the most difficult to extract because of the trifurcated roots, two buccal roots and the one palatal root. All these roots are the strong. We must have to evaluate the root size, curvature and the apparent divergence in the radiographically first. For step used for the extraction of the maxillary molars as defined earlier is the 53R and 53L.
Basic rules are same as for all of the maxillary teeth. First, seat the forcep as apically as possible. Engage the pointed peak at the buccal bifur bifurcation. Apply the buccal force and minimize the palatal force as possible. The movement should be strong, steady and firm in the buccal direction which expands the buccocortical plate and tears the periodontal ligament fibers. Hold the palatal root in its position. Palatal forces should be used but kept to a minimum. After the tactile sensation and luxation of the tooth, apply the tractional force in the occlusal and slightly buccal direction. This is all about the extraction of the maxillary teeth, the forceps used, the movement used and the chair position. Hope you understand and get the concept for the extraction. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button, press the bell icon so you get updated on every upload and follow us on the Instagram. Thank you so much for this listening. Have a nice day. Hope you like the video and must share the video.